Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So today I was vlogging and um, my friend, a really good friend of mine is actually getting married in a couple of weeks and their wedding shower, it's a co-ed shower. Um, their wedding shower is this weekend. So I've been running around like a mad woman trying to get everything together. And I was just gonna vlog this part, but then I thought about it. And since it's like craft time and I'm actually making something, I thought I would share with you guys. So maybe if there is somebody out there and you've waited to the last minute like I have, um, to create a sash and a veil for your bride or your bachelorette or maybe you're the bride and unfortunately you're having to make it for yourself um, I thought I would kind of share my ideas and, and how I'm gonna do it for my friend typically I am NOT a last-minute person in fact I'm always over prepared but with us just recently moving and just being really hectic and trying to unpack and work and just life in general I had a lot of time Originally, I was gonna try to order a sash from Etsy. The biggest issue that I ran into was just that I don't have enough time to wait for them to ship one to me. So, since I'm crunch time here, today's Tuesday and the shower is on Saturday, I got to make it myself. So, I went today to Hobby Lobby to pick up some of the materials. Well, pretty much all of the materials that I was gonna need. So, here's some things that I got. Okay, if you guys have a Hobby Lobby, or if you're a frequent shopper of Hobby Lobby, then you know they have sales every week. So every week, if you pay attention, the items in the store, they flip flop on what goes on sale. So like, let's say this week I was looking for a veil. Unfortunately, I picked the wrong week, my fault. Um, but if I had bought this last week, this would have been 50% off. Unfortunately, I didn't buy it last week. I had to get it today and there was not enough time to wait for next week for it to go on sale. So I did have to pay full price, which full price, it's $14.99. Last week it would have been $7.99, but that's okay. They do always have an online coupon for 40% off, so I was able to use that on this item. So it saved me a couple of dollars. But if you're a smart shopper, give yourself enough time and watch the ads. And every week online, they post their weekly ad. So you can get this 50% off if you just make sure you go the right week. My bride is wanting to do her, she's wanting the wedding shower to mimic their wedding. So their wedding colors are navy blue and a petal pink. And then I believe they've got like gold and cream in there. I'm not for sure on all of that, but those are the colors she told me about. So that's what she said she wanted to do um, as far as her color scheme for her wedding shower. Now the wedding shower itself, the bridal party is throwing it for them. So everybody's kind of got their job and me and Manny, we're both in the, um, we're both in the wedding. He's a groomsman and I'm a bridesmaid. So we are in charge of the decor and the decorations for the shower. So I got all of that stuff. Um, I picked up everything at Arnie's yesterday for that. I wanted to incorporate that in her, in her veil. So I picked these up too. Now these are florals. So this week I was lucky that these were on sale. So these were 50% off. And we're so cute. Okay, so the price here, it's $11.99 for each one, regular price, but they were 50 off, so I got half of that off. And then these I'm gonna intertwine because I wanna do like a floral um, headpiece here with the veil on the back. This is the ribbon that I picked up, and again, if I had been smart, ribbon was on sale last week, I missed it. So this was $6.99, and this is the petal pink that she's got in her color scheme. So I thought this was the perfect size for a sash. I bought some iron-on letters and she's got the gold so I picked these up and I like the cursive and the writing and it helped that I bought this at the same time because I was actually able to like put it against it and make sure that it's gonna fit on this ribbon so I got these gold letters and these were ah, look at the receipts wearable art okay so these were $7.99 um, and these are the iron-on letters and again Last week, they were 50% off. What are you going to do? So, like I said, if you're on a budget, or not even a budget, just be a smart shopper and check your ads because, like I said, every other week, items go on sale 50% off. So, if you can just plan out your shopping, you can save a good chunk of change on this project. So, on the veil part, let me open this. Yeah. Okay, so this is what the veil looks like. And they have different lengths and they have more expensive ones, too. Uh oh oh good okay it does come with a comb these little like holes in here so you can insert uh, now I will say that I personally when I did this before I glued I hot glued the comb to the actual veil because it can slip out this isn't gonna just connect it automatically like it's not gonna just stay put it through the little loops that it has here but then I went ahead and got the hot glue gun and put it across and then 
set it so that way the comb is not gonna come off. Like I said, they do have um, different sizes. They've got really long ones, they've got more like elaborate ones, they've got more expensive ones. But this is just supposed to be for fun. This is not for your actual wedding. So this is gonna be, like I said, for her wedding shower this weekend. And then for the bachelor or bachelorette party we've got going on next weekend. What I like to do with these stickers, which I picked up at Michael's. Let me show these to you. So these are actually in the scrapbook section of Michael's. And they've got tons of different ones. Like with these says, you know, the bride, love is a wonderful thing, misses. I just like the little wedding dress and little cute things. And then I found these little pink heart stickers that say love because this has got kind of her color scheme. Um, and then this one I just thought was really pretty. And these are all stickers. And then the little diamond rings. And then this just for extra little embellishment that I thought was pretty. So my plan is, and I have done this before, just to kind of randomly put these all over the place to kind of fill it up and just give it a little extra in the back. So it's not just a plain veil. So that is my goal for that. Oh, and then one other little arts and crafts project that I'm working on. Center pieces for, this is just for the wedding shower. So what I did is I went to Dollar Tree and picked up these little vases, which they're only a dollar. So I got, um, so I got six of them because these are going to go, I think we've got, we're doing three tables for everybody to like sit at. It's a small shower. So we've got three tables, so it's going to do two on each one. So these were only a dollar each at Dollar Tree. And then I picked up some navy blue ribbon at Arnie's, which I believe this was like, I think around $3. So put that here and then just tie a little bow. And then on Friday, I'm going to actually go and get fresh flowers. So I'm going to do um, light pink roses and baby's breath and just kind of put that in there. And that'll be the centerpieces for the tables, which is really inexpensive, but pretty, pretty little something to add. Okay, so here we are at the veil. So I went ahead and ironed it and all I did was put the pillowcase, I did layer by layer, just put the pillowcase over it and then lightly went over it with the iron just to get all the wrinkles out so we can see better. And then I've just got a flat sheet here that I'm going to place down and you want to kind of spread it out. I did go ahead and hot glue the hair comb that it comes with to the actual veil so this way you don't have to worry about it falling out. And then you just kind of want to lay it out where you can see everything. They are stickers so you just gotta press onto the shoe. Just press really good. in the back <laughs> I am working in the kitchen okay so then the next thing we want to work on is our sash so on our sash I'm gonna have it say bride to be so what you want to do is go ahead and get and it's got all of the directions on the back to tell you exactly how to iron these on but the first thing I like to do is go ahead and cut them out because they come in a big sheet like this and I mean you can't iron on letters like this it's a pain so go ahead and cut them out and I've got pretty much let me see I'm also okay there's my O so I just need one more, I need my E. So you're just gonna, and you gotta be careful because some of the letters they put kind of close to each other and obviously you don't wanna cut one and then if you ever need it later you can't use it. So now I've got all the letters that I need and I can put these aside. Okay, so then on the ribbon part, you know, it comes in the roll and what I went ahead and did is kind of use yourself as a template. So what I did is just kind of put the ribbon around me and if I was wearing the sash, how do I want it placed? So she's about the same size as me. Actually, well, she's a little shorter, but for the most part, same size. So 
this should work on her. So I went ahead and cut it there and then later I'll go in and make the edges look a little nicer. But for right now, we know it's pretty much our base and where we want things there. Okay, to kind of give you an idea of where you're gonna wanna place your letters, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bend it just a little bit. You can always go back in and iron it, but I wanna just use that line as a reference so I know that's the shoulder part. And obviously I don't wanna go anywhere past that. So you wanna go ahead and get your letters. And obviously before you do any ironing, you wanna go ahead and place them out and just see how you like things. This way you still have time to move around. You just wanna kinda of play with it and see how it's gonna line up for you. And the best, the biggest thing is, okay, so here's your shoulder. You want the letters to kinda of start like mid chest here. So let me bring it down just a little bit. Definitely don't start ironing until you see like this is exactly how you want it. You see, I went ahead and placed everything out. I haven't ironed anything yet. I'm just kind of playing with how I want everything. And so far, I'm good with it. Most of my letters on here, and then what I came to realize <laughs> after trial and error is that on these, you gotta actually um, peel them off of this little part. So you wanna go ahead and gently peel it off. Definitely be gentle because you don't want to rip it and then put it back over here and place it where you want it. Let me go ahead and do both. It makes it easier. Both of your letters here. So I've got my bride too and then I want to do my B. So then the package also comes with this sheet here. And this is what I was using to iron all of these on. So you definitely want to make sure you put the shiny side up because this part, as you can see here, it will melt, it will burn. <laughs> So you're gonna very gently, cause you don't wanna move. See, it moves. So be very gentle and definitely before you start ironing, make sure you're still good with where everything is. And if you're not, you can just move it over a little bit. Okay, so then once you've got your lettering where you want it, and of course don't burn your hands doing this, but just try to hold it as best as you can. And then you're gonna just very lightly kind of go over each letter with the iron. I definitely wouldn't just leave it there because you will burn, um, but you just wanna keep going over it until you see that the letters are not coming up anymore and that they're actually sticking to the ribbon. So and I'm basically just using the, um, the corner of this iron to gently go over, almost kind of writing the letter on there. So. Definitely make sure you get the corners, but just be gentle. And then once you've got all of your iron on and everything's pretty much done, you wanna just go ahead and put your pillowcase over the ribbon and you're just gonna lightly go over it with the iron just so that everything looks nice and smooth and finished. Okay, so now on the end to just finish it off, we're just gonna cut smoothly across to give it that kind of finished look. And then what I want is for them to kind of overlap like this, a very thin straight line down. And then you're just gonna get this one here. Overlap. And then just gently kind of push it. You don't wanna push too hard because then if you have any extra glue, it might squeeze out. So just be very gentle. Okay, so I finished cutting all of the stems and I've kind of got two separate piles. Not that it matters, we're gonna mix all of this up. And my mannequin head to kind of help me be able to uh, round it out and just kind of play everything plus I think this helps too because I got a big ass head <laughs> So trying to do it on my head is not the same because she doesn't have a big head like I do <laughs> so using the mannequin can kind of help Okay, so what I'm wanting to do is just to kind of get three and One thing to keep in mind. There's no order to this You just do whatever you want and what you like and at the end that's the whole point of crafts is it's just supposed to be something fun homemade and as long as you make it with love who cares so let me get my my floral stem tape oh and you get two rolls of this by the way for $2.99 I've never actually used this tape before I've seen it used but I definitely thought it would be a lot stickier don't know okay so what I'm thinking I'm going to do with these is I'm just taking two white and a pink one and I want to go ahead and tape the bottom here so this way they'll stay together 
So I'm just going to get my little tape and rub it. Okay, so once you start doing this part, it does tie in together. See, and it held. It doesn't feel sticky at all, but I guess the whole point is for it to stick to flowers. So there you go. So there's those. And then I'm thinking I want to, like I said, I don't have any plan for this. I'm just winging it. So my plan was to kind of braid it together and just see how that looked. And I'm going to keep adding more, obviously. But this is where I just kind of wanted to start was there. And then we'll kind of start it off here. So then what I want to do, let me add a piece of tape here. Like I said, I have no, no plan on this. I'm just winging it. So you wing it too. Okay, so then what I want to do here is, we see where you've got the spaces in between? I want to go ahead and line it up there so that this one fills in those gaps so it looks fuller. And then you can kind of just wrap it a little bit if you want, kind of twist it into each other so that way it blends. Right, so since I've pretty much got the fullness that I'm wanting, what I'm doing now is just kind of randomly going in there and sticking some through to kind of give that 3D effect because I just want some of these to pop out. So I'm just kind of sticking them in there and then this way you can play with them how much you want them to come out. And then once I'm done, I'll just go ahead and tie them down here. So, okay, so tip for you, this green tape did not work. Um, it did help with some of the vines just to kind of put them together, but as far as assembling the actual flower crown, I don't suggest it. It didn't work. My hands got super sticky and it wouldn't actually keep the flowers together. So I had to go ahead and use fishing wire and that's how I was able to kind of connect this. It's definitely a process, so if you're last minute, do this first because it's going to take you a little while. And you just got to kind of play with it and see how you want everything to go. But definitely the fishing wire helped so much.